What's going on guys, it's Scott here from Fudge Muppet and today I'm going to be bringing you an incredibly fun combat build which you can play in Deus Ex Mankind Divided. If you've played through Deus Ex once before, you've probably used quite a bit of stealth and you can do that at times with this build too, but what this video is going to focus on is a blade slicing, guns blazing, bodies exploding playthrough. There are many different ways you can play lethal combat in Deus Ex, however this will show you what we found to be the most fun. You're going to be using a whole lot of grenades and guns as well as a vast array of offensive augmentations especially those awesome experimental ones by the way thank you so much for watching this video I really really appreciate it now let's strap ourselves in for some fun and take a step towards the crazier side of this awesome game so first up, this build is going to be played on normal difficulty. This is because on hard difficulty, your reticule disappears and it makes a combat build way less fun. These higher difficulties tend to be better for stealth playthroughs. So play on normal. If you want to play on hard, you can. You just won't be able to play as recklessly and you'll probably fight from safety using scopes from a long range. With our last ASX guide for the best stealth build, we went through augmentations before we went through gear, but this time it's different. Let's talk gear, especially so you know what kind of weapons we're using before I go through each augment choice. So what weapons are we using? Well, it would be fitting to say all of them, but that's not necessarily the case. You'll be going all out lethal with this build, so we don't recommend carrying any stun guns or tranquilizer rifles unless you're going to be making some sort of hybrid build. For this setup, you'll want shotguns. Two shotguns to be precise. You'll want the standard tactical shotgun, which you can find on the body of heaps of enemies throughout the game, and you'll also want the Devastator shotgun. The Devastator shotgun can be purchased and it's fully automatic, armor piercing, and should be saved for those moments when you want to go all out beast mode. The tactical shotgun is more of a staple, and if you find yourself in a lot of trouble with the police, you're going to find yourself with a never ending supply of ammo, which is always nice. That said, maybe you don't want to mess with the police too much, and because because I don't expect you to run around killing cops to get your ammo, we're also going to be using a combat rifle. You'll then want to have the 10mm pistol, a battle rifle and a sniper rifle. Carry different ammo types for all weapons and make sure you customize them. You can't really customize the Devastator shotgun, not that you need to, and you'll want to make your tactical shotgun burst fire. I think it's best to put a silencer on your 10mm pistol and on your combat rifle. Your combat rifle also goes pretty well with a hollow scope. Make sure your 10mm pistol is automatic, it'll be a great weapon for silently taking out enemies by aiming at their heart and letting the recoil take you up through their brain. This will also be your go-to weapon to fight robots and machinery as you'll be able to gather a solid amount of EMP rounds for it. For your tactical shotgun you'll also have EMP rounds and for your battle rifle and combat rifle you'll have armor piercing rounds. Before you've maxed out your inventory space you'll probably have to choose between carrying the battle rifle or the sniper rifle. I recommend the battle rifle instead. However, if you find a sniper rifle early on, you may want to pick that. The sniper rifle is really powerful and you'll definitely be using one for long range kills. That said, playing close up is the most fun with this build, so make sure you've got plenty of shotgun rounds and plenty of bio cells to use protective augments alongside your unstoppable arsenal. Make sure you have all other kinds of pickup items for health and for building certain ammunition for augments. Oh, and before we get into augments, I just want to give you guys a PSA that the machine pistol is crap. Use it early on in your playthrough though, as ammo is plentiful then. It goes without saying that you can also simply upgrade the damage and other stats of all your guns and you should do so when possible. Grenades will also be carried for extra explosion, opt for frags and concussion grenades. Now let's talk augmentations. Like last time I want to remind you that prioritizing every single augment choice in order is very complex and depends a lot on what you're best at and what you prefer to do. That being said, we still recommend prioritizing battery, health and protection. After going through all the augments, I'll do my best to give you an end summary on what to prioritize in case you forget. So firstly off, you'll want to hit up the Saraf Series 8 Energy Converter, focus on recharge rate and recharge delay first. Max these out. Usually in Deus Ex, capacity isn't worth focusing on, and that's true with this build, but you could get max capacity later if you want it for more fun, as it will allow you to do the really long Titan Shield runs in slow motion. Not crucial, but very cool. Maxing recharge rate and delay will let you use lethal melee kills all the time, and this will definitely save you when you need to reload it and an enemy runs up to your cover. Remember too, with why capacity isn't necessary, if you really want to sustain yourself and use an 
and augment like the Titan Shield for a long time, you can just keep using Bio Cells. Another thing we'll recommend for all builds is the Social Enhancer, but it is optional. It'll let you get a lot more out of conversations and the storyline if you use it, but perhaps you're not concerned about being the nice guy when you play this build. We'll leave that one up to you. The Social Enhancer is really all you'd want to add to the Cranium section. Obviously, if you want any hacking capabilities, you can do that later on. It's all up to you. Moving straight down to the skin section, we have some very important augmentation choices. Firstly, we have the Titan. This gives you the really cool ability where your skin becomes black and you're protected from all damage. Maxing this out will make it efficient to use, and to use it most effectively, you should still stay behind cover and pop it on when you lean out to shoot. This way, you take basically no damage and it also saves you tremendously when enemies throw frag grenades. You can just turn on the Titan before the grenade explodes and you're worry free. You can also use this in combination with bio cells to do massive slaughter rampages, running through waves of enemies without taking damage. Unfortunately for you though, your Titan shield can be disabled if an enemy throws an EMP grenade, which is why we're also maxing out the Rhino Dermal Armor Augmentation. This will give you superior resistances against physical damage and with the pulse shield upgrade your enemy's EMP attacks won't affect you. This makes the Titan Shield unbeatable. Electricity of any kind won't deactivate your Titan now. These augments are priorities. At least get the first ranks of them as soon as possible. If we jump to the torso section again, we've talked about battery, but not health. If you head into the Sentinel RX health system, you can see that it's pretty much the same layout as the battery upgrade. You want to max out recharge delay and your maximum health. This time, it's the recharge rate that is least important. Health, though, isn't as important as your battery, as your battery can make you invulnerable via your skin augments, but definitely hit up that health when you can. If you want to play like a tank, you need to be built like one. Max health is more important than delay or rate, in my opinion. Otherwise, one mistake can see you dead really fast. Regardless of how fast your health would have come back, you're gone if you have zero. You'll also want the implanted rebreather in the torso section. You're sweet against EMP and concussion grenades, but if an enemy gasses you, you'll be in trouble. This prevents that, but also lets you enter gas-based areas, which fits in with the unstoppable theme we've got going on. Augmentations for this combat build might not be what you think in the arms section. Surely the build that uses guns would use the cybernetic weapon handling, right? Well, our playthrough, we actually found it quite wasteful, and I'm going to recommend that you only get this if you feel like you need it. Even if you only play video games casually, the standard recoil in Deus Ex is very acceptable. You'll also be using iron sights a lot, and when you're not, you'll be using a shotgun or pistol up close anyway. This is a completely personal choice. If you want to reload faster or have less recoil, then get these, but I have a good feeling you won't need it. If you need to reload super desperately, just switch guns and you'll be carrying about five. So yeah, just be very hesitant with this and save your game before you think of trying it out. I found it unneeded. Even on hard difficulty when your reticule disappears, I didn't think it to be that much of a help. Not worth the investment. In the cybernetic arms prosthesis section, we will want to max out carry capacity. This will let you carry lots of guns, lots of explosives, and lots of ammunition types. It's essential for this build, although you can work on it mid game. It's not super necessary straight off the bat. You can also get optimized musculature if you want to feel strong and throw objects at people to stun them, but it's not the most needed thing. I chose it anyway for fun. It's cool to charge at an enemy turret and then pick it up and throw it off a bridge. Same thing goes for the punch through wall augment. Technically, you can just blow up these walls and vents with explosives. If you want to go to more places and save on explosives, those, you could try it out. As you can see, a lot of the arm section is optional, just like the nano blade. The nano blade, however, is pretty powerful and I would get it to ensure the most joy possible. It is deadly accurate and becomes explosive once you max it out, sending out spikes which kill enemies in all directions. It does need ammunition to use though, just like the Typhoon. Speaking of the Typhoon, it's absolutely needed. It causes a huge explosion around you which doesn't harm you, so no need to use the Titan when you activate it. Obviously, you'll want to get the lethal variant, otherwise you'll just be gassing your enemies to death. Nifty if you're into that kind of thing. Another augmentation in the back section that you'll want to use is the Quicksilver Reflex Booster. This will let you take out two enemies at the same time with one melee attack. It looks awesome and it also saves you ammunition. As a general rule, use melee attacks to conserve bullets when needed. And in the back section, I went with three awesome orgs that you'll definitely want for the most epic playthrough. They are the Icarus Landing System, Icarus Dash, and the Focus Enhancer. 
Enhancement. The Focus Enhancement pretty much slows down time so you can move quickly around your enemies, dodging bullets and killing them all. It's super overpowered when used in combination with Titan, but also they will drain your battery very fast. The Icarus Landing System is also more of an optional perk, but it's still very powerful. I use it to jump off buildings and slam to the ground to take out my enemies. You can also get around the game faster. Same thing goes for the Icarus Dash. With Charge Dash upgrade, you'll be able to zip around the game fast, but you'll also be able to smash into your enemies, sending them flying. You can even play like the Vanguard class from Mass Effect by zipping up to your enemies with a Titan Shield on and then blasting them away with your powerful shotgun point blank. On your legs, you'll want the Kill Springer Jump Mod. This allows you to get around the game more effectively. It's a staple, but it's not foundational for this character. Moving to the eyes section, one thing I decided to max out was the Retinal Prosthesis. By getting the Flash Suppressant, you won't be blinded by concussion grenades and mines. This is super useful if you want to throw one at your enemy and just run in and shoot them while they're blinded, and it also helps when they throw these grenades at you. Trust me, when you play a combat build, enemies use grenades all the time. So that's about it. To wrap up, here are your super, super important main priorities. Battery recharge, the Titan, Rhino armor, health, carry capacity, the Typhoon, and a ridiculous amount of bio cells and powerful gear. Everything else I recommended is great, and the stuff I said not to get, you probably shouldn't. If it explodes, it's good. If it keeps you alive, even better. Thanks so much for watching this video, I'm super grateful and to instantly get more of this kind of content, head to our channel and subscribe so you don't miss a single build. My name is Scott, this is our combat build for Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I'll be back soon to nerd out with you all once again.